So, we saw that uh, with respect to Otsu method, so Otsu which is a thresholding method. So, we saw that uh, for a threshold t, small t that uh, that we chose, uh, we showed that sigma square uh, t that is the uh, total variance which is of course, independent of t small t is equal to sigma square w of t plus sigma square b of t where we of course, understand w to be the within class variance and b to be a between class variance. Now, we want a t that should be optimal and therefore, the optimal t the optimal t okay, that you would like is the one that will either maximize between class or in effect in, in uh, or in effect it will be it will also minimize sigma square within class variance. Now, if you if you look at the equations for sigma square w of t what we had was summation j equal to 1 to 2 uh, sigma square j of t into n j by n and uh, for sigma square b of t what we had was summation j equal to 1 to 2. Uh, then we had mu j minus mu uh, minus mu t that is mu that is total mean whole square into n j by n and uh, between these two like I said you know one could uh, uh, one could actually minimize this or maximize this, but between the two we, we typically end up choosing to maximize sigma square b of t. So, we actually maximize the uh, uh, between class variance and therefore, and why is why why we why do we normally do that is because uh, this involves only the means whereas, sigma square w involves uh, involves uh, second order statistics which is the variances. And secondly, this uh, with the, this uh, sigma square b which is the between class variance is actually amenable to it is amenable to a recursion which in turn reduces the reduces the computational complexity and am amenable to recursion. So, what you are really looking at is uh, to is uh, actually to solve for some like t star which is the optimal value of a t small t such that um, such that this is equal to arg max sigma square b of t where uh, uh, where this t runs from 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to l right. So, if you see this is an this is an exhaustive search ok. So, what does what does entails is some is an exhaustive search ok. So, which is which is why which is why time complexity it can be high because you need to search through all values of t and and uh, and then right through this exhaustive search you find out that value of t for which sigma square b is is a maximum and that would be that would be your say t star ok. So, in that sense Otsu a thresholding right. So, so if somebody gives you an image and uh, you know this is a gray scale image and if you wanted to wanted to turn it into a binary and you want to look at what particular t star should you uh, should you choose such that all intensity is less than or equal to t star belong to right can be kind of reduced to gray level 0 and all uh, all intensities that are greater than t star are, redu are, are assigned a value 1 that you would actually find out. Uh, and uh, this is one more thing right I, let me just show you an example. So, here is a thresholding uh, you know, uh, implementation. I will also explain what we mean by a, mean by a, a global threshold ok. I have not actually told I have not explained what that is yet, but you can see that right here is a human face right this is a grayscale image and you want to convert it into a binary image. So, you want to assign. So, you can see that it makes sense in the sense that you know pixels that are a little dark for example, the hair and then the background okay, those are all those have all been assigned a value 0. So, they have all they have all gotten gotten into the black region and uh, even the even the beard, moustache, and all that, right? That has all come out as black or as zero, and then the face and the ears, right? They they those have come out to be one. Okay, so that is how it works. Now moving on, you might uh, you might actually wonder. Okay, now yeah. So let me just add this point that it is amenable to uh, recursion which uh, reduces computational complexity right which reduces computational complexity reduces computational complexity uh, we will not really we will not uh, we will not enter into what this is and so on this helps to know that something like that is possible 
Now, at this point of time, you might ask, how does the scheme extend to, let's say, to more levels, multiple levels, what is called multi-level OTSU thresholding. So, if you were interested in doing a multi-level OTSU, then uh, okay, that would be, of course, even more exhaustive as you can see. And the way that works is multi-level thresholding. Uh, so, what that what that actually means is that uh, you have again an image, but then instead of just classifying, okay, this could be again again a grayscale image, and you want to convert it into another image wherein, let's say, let's say you want to give you want to assign maybe m number of levels, let's say four levels, five levels, whatever, right? You want to go into some some m level assignment, right? And uh, if you wanted to see how you could extend also to this, it is very straightforward. So. You can again go ahead and uh, solve this optimization problem, okay, which in the incidentally happens to be a global optima, right? So you have to search for it, but it's an exhaustive search. And uh, what this means is that, uh, let us say that you're looking for, um, let's say T naught star, T one star, all the way up to T M minus one star, because if you have M levels, this for M level kind of a thresholding, M level thresholding. So you will need, uh, so you need, you know, t naught star, t one star, right up to t star m minus one. This you would find as arg max, right? Argument, of course, you know, arg argument that leads to maximum of this function, right? That is what you want. You want the argument. You want. You don't want the, want the value of the function. You want the argument that actually maximizes the function. And this is like sigma square b, but now it is going to be a function of t naught, t one. T two all the way up to T m minus one, and uh, this you will maximize over uh, zero less than or equal to T naught less than or equal to T one less than or equal to T two all the way up to less than or equal T m minus one less than or equal to L. Okay, so this again an exhaustive search, and therefore this will of course become even more computationally complex. Uh, we will not actually we will not actually delve into details of this. This helps to know that OTSU naturally extends and where where this sigma square b right of whatever t naught t 1 and all that we have here right right up to t m minus 1 will now be given by given as summation j is equal to 1 to 1 to m number of classes and you have got like mu j of now when I say t I really mean t naught t 1 all of that up to t m minus 1 minus mu t the whole square into n j by n where n j and all means the same things right whatever whatever we had earlier so those okay those things remain the same so n j for example would would mean number of the pixels in class j pixels number of pixels in class j and so on and n will be a total number of pixels total number of number of the pixels in the image ha huh. and mu j right again will be a function of <coughs> right all these values okay okay threshold values <coughs> and uh Okay. Now, after this, right, there is one more thing that we would like to I would like to talk about. So, earlier you saw in that example that there is something called a global thresholding is what was what was written in that image. Right, when I flashed that image to you, okay, what was written was a, a global thresholding. Okay. Now, what do we actually mean by that? See uh, what we have implemented right now. What we what we showed as an example, and what we what we actually explained as an algorithm was actually for something called a global thresholding, which means that given this grayscale image, okay, given this grayscale image, for the for the entire. So suppose we again again go back to the binary case, okay, a two level thresholding. Let's just keep this simple. So for the for the two level case, what it meant was you picked up a T star, a 
okay, which was the most optimal. But this T star is supposed to work for the entire image, okay. That's why, that's why we call it a call it a global threshold because it is supposed to hold good for the entire image. But then this is always true. It is it always is it always true that uh, true that you know you can you can actually pick up one T star and say that it works for the entire image. The answer is uh, no. For example, right, you might have an image, okay, that has some uh, that has a gradient in terms of the illumination. Right. Typically, when you see an image, uh, you seem to you seem to sort of uh, assume that it will have an illumination, you know, that is uh, uniform. Uh, but it need not be the case, right? Sometimes imagine that imagine that you have a light source, right, that is pointing here, and therefore, right, it'll try, it'll tend to illuminate this part of the image more. And then, as you as you come towards the other end of the image, you might see the effect of the illumination go down. So. If this if this gradient was not there in the sense that the illumination was actually a constant, then maybe it would have made sense to pick up a pick up a global T star. But now, given that illumination has a role to play, and therefore, right, there is a there is a gradient in there. What it could mean is, if you if you now now computed a threshold based upon the entire image, and then you came up with some T star, and suppose this side is bright, and this side is relatively dark. Right, because the because the illumination because the the source the the lighting source is on this side, then what it would actually mean is that this this uh, T star right. So so you might have, let us say, uh, let me let me just show this image again, okay? Because then you would understand better. Now this was this was a global local case. Now this is uh, that was a global case. This is a local case. Now imagine uh, this is actually a sonnet for Lena, okay? Lena, who you know quite well by now. So, this is sonnet for Lena and you can see that this is actually a, actually a binary text right. There is a uh, there is a white background and then on which on which there are these there is these, uh, there is the letters in black. Now, you would think that if I do a binarization I should get uh, all these letters out ideally and then the background should just become either white or black. So, okay the background should probably be white and then whatever is my text that I have actually written or the sonnet should come out as black. Now, if you just now look at this, look at this kind of a gradient in the illumination, right? You find that, you find, uh, you find that you know this portion is more illuminated as compared to this, and this is not, this is not because the underlying information is like that. It is, it is being influenced by the you know by the you know illumination, and therefore what this means is that if you try to compute a global threshold T star, use the whole image and compute it, then that T star may turn out to be may turn out to be less for this portion which means that which means that you know here where there is a black text but then because the illumination is higher there this may all be assigned a value 1 in which case you might lose all this information all the text here which is what you see here. So, the so the B part is in fact a global threshold right and uh, there it shows the effect of a global threshold and you can clearly see that you have lost out on all these written words. Uh, on the contrary when you come here right in contrast when you come down here uh, because this is already dark right and uh, you know this is more dark therefore what will happen is the, the T star that you have picked up right is probably you know is probably too high for this region right and therefore even things right that you would like to be assigned as as white for example the background will all will all will all become zero and therefore right, you end up end up you know lo losing all of this information in information right and uh, and uh, right even th even these even these words are gone because these is because these letters are also gone right and uh, and uh, what has happened is uh, the entire thing got kind of merged right the background which should have been ideally white got merged with with what what is black and all the all the right in between values that supposedly should have been white also became black because of the illumination gradient and therefore you lost everything here uh, now, if you tried something like a local thresholding, which you have not explained till now, I, I haven't even talked about how this how this local thresholding works. I'm going to talk about that scheme. But if you had a local thresholding scheme, then of course, right, you could get something out like that, which makes a lot more sense because you've got all this text out against a white background. Okay, this is what. Well, you could of course improve upon this. Like I said, you know, this is this is with respect to some kind of an optimality criterion. But whatever it is, okay, this is definitely better than better than getting something like this. Okay, this is what, this is the this is sort of the motivation for doing a thresholding that we say is local. Okay, that means 
instead of finding a, finding a global threshold, right, we might want to find out, you know, maybe, right, in a sense, what you're looking for is in the image, I should probably have a threshold, you know, for, for this region, for this region, a separate threshold for this region, a separate threshold. So, it will be like, maybe, you know, for this I need a different threshold, for this I need a different threshold and for this I need a different threshold and so on. And then again, right, at a, at a finer scale, you might actually want to know what should be, in fact, you might even go to the extent of saying that I might even need, need, you know, a threshold. Uh, I mean, so what, uh, now again, you might ask, is it alright to use this threshold for the entire region or should I even ask for, uh, for, you know, for a threshold for each of, each of, each of these, see, pixels. I mean, you can go down to the, down to, down to that level, right, I mean, you can, uh, at an extreme, you can ask for a threshold for each pixel. And you might want to say for this pixel, if I have a T star, right, if my intensity is less than T star, then it becomes 0. If it is greater than T star, right, then, uh, then, you know, uh, uh, then it would become 1. So, you could even stretch it, stretch it to, to that extreme. On one, one extreme, you have a global threshold, which is like one threshold for the entire image. On the other hand, you can have a region-wise sort of a threshold. And at the other extreme, you can have a threshold for each um, a pixel, okay. Now, how do we do this? Uh, now, the, right, I am going to talk about uh, talk about something called adaptive uh, thresholding, okay. And uh, I am going to talk about one method, okay. There are uh, this is not the only way to do this, but I am going to talk about one standard way to way to do this, okay. And this can be employed anywhere. It could be employed whether you use Otsu or whether you use a different method like Chaukeniko or whatever, right? This is this is just a scheme. We use some kind of an interpolation scheme. And um, because of the fact that right, you have very, sp you know, sort of, uh, you could have, I will explain what I actually mean by that. I mean, so even when, uh, when you actually split these regions like this, right, it could turn out that, uh, that for some of these regions, you can't even, you, you cannot even assign, assign actually a threshold. Now, I will explain in more detail what I mean by that. So, when you split it into smaller regions, it, you might end up, end up with situations where some regions you can't even assign, assign a threshold. And therefore, right, what happens is, uh, if you wanted to do a, do a thresholding, then you will have to, you know, interpolate, interpolate from, from your, say, neighbors. I mean, you will have to guess a threshold for such regions by using the, using the threshold values in its, say, neighborhood. And uh, because that will involve sparse, uh, right, there are probably, right, not kind of too many regions and, you uh, know, it is not true that every region will have a threshold and therefore, this interpolation is kind of a little more tricky than the one, okay, which we have seen earlier. For example, when you did uh, image rotation, uh, translation and all it, we were doing uh, kind of a bilinear interpolation, but there, you know, there was always a guarantee that you had four neighbors that had values, whereas right, such a guarantee, okay, does not even exist here and therefore, you know, it just requires a different line of thought. We will eventually also try to use bilinear interpolation when you want, when we, uh, when we finally want, you know, a pixel level, pixel level sort of a threshold. Uh, I will explain that. But right now, okay, uh, as we stand, okay, what we need is a thresholding scheme, an interpolation scheme that will assign a threshold for each region. Okay, now how does this work? Now this adaptive kind of, uh, you know, uh, this one, a thresholding method. So adaptive thresholding is used, is employed, is employed, is employed when when a global threshold is not is not appropriate a global threshold is not appropriate is not appropriate okay for example due to you know, illumination illumination gradient and so on 